What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing Ubuntu Linux. At the end of this guide, you will no longer be using Windows, and you'll be able to craft your own fully customizable setup of Ubuntu on your own system. The first thing we need to do is download the Ubuntu ISO. So we'll head over to ubuntu.com and navigate to the downloads page. And I will scroll down and be using the 24.10 version today, because that is the latest version. So there actually is an installation tutorial page on Ubuntu's official website, but this installation is so self-explanatory that I'm not going to be using this today. This video is more about how to customize your Ubuntu setup after the installation process, so stick around for that. And the first thing we need to do is plug in our USB, load up this grub screen, and hit enter. Alright, jumping straight into the installation, we do see this install wizard screen, and that's going to prompt us to check our language. So we're going to hit yes on English. And Ubuntu has some accessibility options that you can enable, so if you do need to enable some of that stuff, just go ahead and click some of these drop downs. But I don't need this stuff today, so I'm going to hit next. And for the keyboard layout, if you do have a different keyboard other than a US keyboard, you do want to modify this, but I don't, so I'm going to click next. And since I'm using an Ethernet connection, I am wired in, so I will click next. And we do want to install Ubuntu, so go ahead and click next on that. And since we don't have a auto install YAML file, we are going to go ahead and use an interactive installation today. And we will be using a default selection today because we don't want to have to uninstall a bunch of extraneous software. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card or something similar, I would recommend checking this box. I am on a virtual machine today, so I'm going to not check these. But you don't have to worry about this right now because you can always fix this later on after Ubuntu is installed. So this is the first actual interactive step of our install, and we're going to go ahead and check manual installation here so we can partition our disks correctly. So click the plus sign here. Navigate to swap, and we're going to use a 4096 megabyte swap partition today. And highlight the free space, click the plus one more time, and we're going to use ext4 for the remainder of the space, and that will generate both a root file system on root, and it will generate a boot file system on boot EFI. And this sort of looks similar to what we've seen with our Gen 2 and our Arch installations, so we're going to go ahead and click next. So for my name, I'm going to put Tony, and for my computer's name, I'm going to put Ubuntu. BTW, because I'm using Ubuntu, by the way. And for my password, I have a super secure password of 1234. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And yeah, we'll require the password to log in. For my situation, I am in Los Angeles, California, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And we're going to review our situation here. We did opt out of encryption on disk. We did opt out of proprietary software, and our partitions look good to go. So let's go ahead and click the Install button and let it rip. And while this is installing, we can click this terminal icon. And it'll show us what's actually going on under the hood here. Alright, 2410 is installed and ready to use. So we'll go ahead and restart now. Alright, here is the login screen, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. The password was 1234, so that's good to go and we're prompted with this beautiful welcome to ubuntu 24.10 screen so let's click next and check this box to not share system data and click next and this is just telling you about the app store so we don't need to use that today let's just click finish you're staring at this screen and it kind of looks like a desktop environment you, you've got a toolbar you've got some icons you've got a clock and you're thinking hey this is great but this is not usable for somebody like me, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down what I would do. So let's start the process of actually customizing this install to make it what I would consider usable. The first thing we're gonna do is open up a terminal. And we're gonna be doing that a lot today, so let's remember the key bind of Control alt t and Let's maximize that. In Ubuntu, the package manager is called apt. You can sync your packages and install them with this command. sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. Let's run our password. And let's confirm that. And we are installing a lot of bloatware here and because that is the nature of using Ubuntu. If you're interested in more of a minimal operating system, go ahead and check out my Arch Linux or my Gen 2 Linux installation tutorial. All right, our packages are synced and upgraded. So we can go ahead and clear the terminal with Control L. And the beauty of Linux in general is that I don't need to actually go to a random website to install my programs. I can just do it right here from the terminal using a simple command. So let's do that. We're going to install NeoVim using the apt package manager. Let's type sudo apt install NeoVim. And confirm that with yes. 
and it's that easy. And this is a big differentiator for me because when I install programs on Windows, oftentimes I'm prompted with additional bloatware or additional features that I don't really want. And there's ways to get around that by using Nainai or other third-party tools, but with Linux, I don't need to worry about that. I can just literally type sudo apt install whatever program I want, and I know I'm only getting that program and the dependencies required for that program. So let's clear the terminal again. The terminal is running bash, which is just a shell scripting language that we can customize pretty easily. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. To edit the bash configuration file, we can just type vim dot bash rc. And all we're gonna do is go to the very bottom of the file by hitting shift G and we're gonna hit O to get into insert mode in a new line. And we're just gonna type echo hello. And we will escape colon WQ to save and quit that. And we're gonna type source dot bash RC to reload that file. And now every time we open bash, it'll say hello. So this is cool, but we don't actually wanna say hello every time we open bash, we want something cooler. So let's go ahead and install NeoFetch by typing sudo apt install NeoFetch. And we'll clear the terminal and we can run NeoFetch. And NeoFetch is a cool little program that shows us just some various system information that we're working with. Let's clear the terminal. And let's go back into our bash rc by typing vim.bashrc. And let's go shift g to get to the last line. And let's change this last line by hitting shift c to go into insert mode and change the last line. And let's just add NeoFetch to it. And escape colon wq to save the file. And now we're going to source our bash rc one more time. Source.bashrc. And as you can see, we do have NeoFetch right into the kit. So just to confirm that, we'll go ahead and close our terminal and control alt t to open a terminal. And there, NeoFetch is running immediately when we enter bash, so that's pretty cool. So let's clear the terminal. One command you'll be running often is ls, which lists all the files in your current directory. This is great, but we can customize this to look a lot better with an officially supported program called EZA. So we will go ahead and download that and install it by typing sudo apt install eza. And now we can go ahead and run eza by typing eza. Now it looks exactly like ls, but the beautiful part about eza is we have more flags we can pass into it. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna type eza, I'm gonna pass in the al parameter to it. And I'm also gonna pass in the color equals always, and that's two dashes for color. And we're gonna pass in the group directories first. And that looks a heck of a lot better than ls. We can tell bash to run that eza command whenever we type ls by using a bash alias. Let's set that up by typing vim.bashrc. And we're gonna to navigate to this specific alias by typing slash alias space ls, and we'll hit enter. And this is the line we do want to change, so let's navigate to this with the arrow keys and we'll type CI quote to change everything inside the quotations. And we're going to type that command that we entered earlier. So that's going to be EZA dash AL dash dash color equals always dash dash group directories first. We'll hit escape colon WQ to save that file. And let's source our bash RC again. And now if we type ls, we do see that EZA command runs instead. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with aliases. And while we are messing with aliases, let's go ahead and make one more alias that's going to make our lives a lot easier. So let's clear the terminal and do vim.bashrc again. And this time we can just go to the bottom of the file by hitting shift G. Let's go up to these aliases to keep them all organized. And let's add a new alias by going into insert mode and typing alias syu equals sudo apt update semicolon sudo apt upgrade. And what this is gonna do is we're gonna remap the word syu to automatically run this command that syncs our packages and installs them. So comment below if you use art by the way because you're gonna understand why we used syu. All right, we'll hit escape and right quit to save the file. Let's source that bash rc file one more time. And let's try running that command, syu. And there it is. All right, cool, our packages are up to date, so let's move on.
let's get out of the terminal here for a minute and move on to something that's very, very important in a post installation, and that is to configure Firefox to not be so bloated. So let's open Firefox by clicking Firefox. As we can see, when we open Firefox, we're immediately prompted with all this corporate art and bloatware in general, so let's get rid of that with an easy fix. We're gonna search for arkinfox user.js and that first github link is what we need. Firefox allows you to edit your configuration with a user.js file and since there's so many settings available due to feature bloat we're just going to leverage the work that's already been done by arkinfox to harden our firefox and deep load it. So we'll scroll down to user.js here and we will download the raw file and let's go ahead and open that in the file explorer. Now to drop this user.js in our config destination let's go ahead and go to the url bar and type about colon support so we can locate that config directory. And if we scroll down a little bit, we do see that it says profile directory equals home, Tony, snap, Firefox, common, Mozilla, Firefox, TIC 837 iw.default, which is kind of a mouthful. So let's just go ahead and click open directory. Let's snap that to the right with a Windows key right. And let's open files on the left side of the screen. And we could literally just drag and drop this user.js file into this default folder, and we should be good to go. So to confirm that, let's close this. We'll close that, close that. And we reopen Firefox, and there you go. Perfectly minimal setup, no bloatware, no corporate ads, no corporate art. And Firefox is almost at a usable state. One more thing I like to do is I like to install an ad blocker, and that's gonna be uBlock Origin. So let's type uBlock Origin and we will get this second link for the Firefox extension. Click add to Firefox, continued installation, add, okay. And as you see, that took me like nine or 10 clicks and they want you to really confirm that you're gonna use this thing because, well, no further comment on this. All right, Firefox is pretty much ready to go and that took about one minute, so let's quit out of that and move on to the next step. And that is Keybinds. So we have been launching and quitting our programs pretty inefficiently by clicking on them and clicking the X button respectively. But we want that to be an easier and more efficient process, so let's go ahead and use the super key and search the word keyboard to set up some keybinds. We'll click view and customize shortcuts, and we'll go to launchers. So as you can see, launching the terminal is set to control alt T, which I already went over in the beginning of the video, but that's a little bit inefficient for me. So I'm going to change that by typing super enter, and I'll set that. And that's a common practice for a lot of the dynamic window managers that I'm used to using, so. And while we're here, let's go ahead and modify our launch web browser to super B for browser. And let's set that. And let's search for close. And we see we have this close window keybind set to alt F4. And that's, for those of you coming over from Windows, you're familiar with that. You can keep that if you want it, but that's not very efficient for me. So I'm gonna change that to super Q. And that's a very common practice for a lot of these dynamic window managers that I like to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to Super Q. And that should be enough for right now. So let's go ahead and quit out of this with Super Q, Super Q. Oh, I already feel a lot faster. And let's open a terminal with Super Enter. And let's snap that to the left with Super Left. And let's do Super B to open that browser and snap that to that right. And there we go, that's already feeling a lot more efficient for me. It's starting to feel like a workable system. So let's move into the next step. One more thing we need to consider is launching a specific program that is not listed in here. So let's head over to the custom shortcuts section and let's teach you how to add a specific custom shortcut. So the name of this one is gonna be File Explorer because that's what we wanna launch. And the default file manager in Ubuntu is called Nautilus. And another reason why Linux is really cool in general is because the name of the program is typically the name of the command that you run to open that program. So in this case, the command is just gonna be Nautilus. And for the shortcut, let's go ahead and do super F for files. All right, we can quit out of that with super Q. Quit out of that with super Q as well. Let's jump into the next step. We wanna add a custom theme for our setup. And for me, I like the Tokyo Night theme. So let's open Firefox with that super B hotkey. And we can snap that to the top of the screen by hitting super up. And let's go ahead and search for the Tokyo Night GTK theme. And there it is, Tokyo Night GTK theme. So we're gonna click download here. The specific theme that I want is the Tokyo Night borderless Mac OS buttons theme. So I'm gonna download this one. And let's just save that into our downloads folder for now. So in order to apply these themes, we're gonna actually have to move these themes into the .themes directory. So let's open our file browser with super F. Let's 
let's go ahead and go to that download section. Let's right click here and extract. Now that we have this folder extracted, we can delete the zip file. And now it's time to put the Tokyo Night theme into the dot themes directory. So let's just quit out of all this. And let's open up a terminal here with super enter. And let's make that themes directory by typing mkdir.themes. And we'll move those Tokyo Night themes into that themes directory by typing mv capital D downloads. I'm gonna press tab and I'm just gonna press star to move everything in this folder to dot themes. And to actually apply that theme, we're gonna to need to install a program called Gnome Tweaks. So let's clear the terminal and let's install that by typing sudo apt install gnome-tweaks. All right, that's ready to rock. So let's quit that terminal with super Q. Let's go ahead and open Gnome Tweaks by typing super and searching for tweaks. And there it is. Over here in the appearance section, we can go to the legacy applications and there it is, Tokyo Dark. So let's close that and let's open a terminal to see what that looks like now. Beautiful. So we have that borderless Tokyo night dark theme and we've got those Mac OS buttons here. So it's looking great. So we have set the theme for our GTK3 applications, but as we can see, if we open the tweaks program again, it hasn't been applied to that. So to finish the theme equation, we need to add our themes to our GTK4 config as well. Let's go ahead and do that by typing cp-r.themes slash Tokyo night dark slash gtk4 slash star for everything in that folder and let's copy that to dot config slash gtk4 and i'm going to press tab to complete that and let's hit enter and let's check gnome tweak to see if it worked beautiful now our gtk4 applications are also set up with that tokyo night dark theme and the mac os buttons and the borderless window one more thing we can do is change our default font so let's go ahead and quit out of gnome tweaks by doing super q and let's clear the terminal and let's install a better font by typing sudo apt install fonts dash jetbrains mono and let's apply that font system wide by doing tweaks and going into the font section and changing the interface text to JetBrains Mono. Let's do regular. All right. All right, let's quit out of no tweaks with the super Q. Let's clear the terminal. And at this point, we've got our hotkeys, we've got our terminal, we've got our Firefox hardened. Uh, we've got our keybind for our file explorer. So we don't need this sidebar anymore. We're gonna uninstall that by typing sudo apt remove gnome shell extension ubuntu doc let's hit yes for that and that's gone so let's log out and log back in oh my goodness that is beautiful we've got two more things to do and one is to get rid of this home folder from our desktop icons by right clicking and clicking desktop icon settings and unchecking this show home folder and that's gone perfect and now we just want to set a new wallpaper so let's open firefox with the super b and let's just search for tokyo night wallpaper uh, let's go ahead and click on this one here and let's go ahead and check out these avogadro 1920 by 1080 wallpapers here and let's use the blue section looks like these are going to be some various chemical symbols. Let's go ahead and use the vitamin D PNG because uh, since we're inside so much, we, we do need that vitamin D. So, And we can actually just set that image as desktop by right clicking it and clicking set image as desktop. There it is. That looks good. All right. Thank you guys so much for checking out this Ubuntu install and customization guide. Drop a comment if you'd like me to go over anything else Linux related. And as always, I've got to end the video with an obligatory NeoFetch.